It was a clash of kingdoms. Rome, the Roman Empire, and Israel or the kingdom of God. Caesar on one hand, Messiah on the other. In the year 303, the Roman Emperor Diocletian, along with his co-emperors, launched what would be known as the Great Persecution of Christians. He issued a number of edicts that removed all legal rights from Christians. This is the greatest persecution in the Roman Empire. He required Christians to offer sacrifices to the gods. He targeted ministers. The property of Christians was confiscated. Christians were arrested, ministers especially. The prisons became so full of Christians and ministers that the Romans had to release criminals to make room for them. The imprisoned Christians were given the choice. Offer up sacrifices to our gods or you will stay imprisoned or we will kill you. And there were believers who compromised and gave in, offered up sacrifices. Most did not, as far as we know, but there were those, a good many, who did. Believers were killed for their faith. Some were burned alive. In the hills of the Ionian coast of modern-day Turkey are the ruins of an ancient temple, the Temple of Apollo of Didyma. In the temple was an oracle, a woman, a priestess, who was said to be possessed by the gods. She would go into trances, shake and, and writhe, and, and people would seek revelation from the gods to come out of her mouth. She would give answers. At the end of the year 302, the emperor sent a representative to the temple of Apollo to the oracle and asked to inquire from the gods the question, should I launch this persecution against the Christians? The oracle's answer told him, yes, do it. And so the greatest persecution of Christians in the Roman Empire was launched by a possessed woman channeling the spirits said to be the god Apollo and others. And you know, it goes with what we shared last week when I shared the message called a case of possession and what we have to pray that behind what's happening in the nation, there are spirits. Even behind the political realm, there are spirits, principalities. So what would you have done back then? If you were confronted with a choice, offer up sacrifices to the gods and save your life, or refuse and be killed. What would you do? There were those who said, well, I'm just going to do it, but it won't mean anything. But for those who refused, they were killed, or they were left in prison for years. They could be. How did they, how did they resist? How did they resist? What was their, their power, their strength to resist of the, the, the loss of all things and still say, I don't care? The seeds of all these things, the persecution of the believers, and the power of the disciples to stand against it all begins in the book of Acts. And we're going to look at one short passage in one chapter of Acts in which all, all these seeds are there. It was recorded over two centuries before the great persecution, and it's this. Acts 17, the disciples are in the city of Thessalonica. There arises an uproar against them. Verse 6. When they, the, the multitudes, the mob, those searching, hunting down for the apostles, did not find them, they began dragging Jason and some brothers before the city authorities, shouting, these men who have upset the world or turned the world upside down are here also, and Jason has welcomed them in. And they all act contrary against the decrees of Caesar, saying, there is another king, Jesus. What I want you to note are two phrases here. In the Greek, it says the men act contrary to the, well, in English it says to the decrees or laws of Caesar, but in the Greek, the word translated decrees or laws is the word dogma. The dogma of Caesar or the doctrine of Caesar. It can be laws, but interesting, dogma it clearly has a religious connotation. And you see, behind the political realm is the spiritual realm. 
Today we're going to focus on the next phrase. It starts out by saying they go against the dogmas of Caesar. And then it says the next word. Then it says saying there is a basileus in Greek. A basileus heteros. Basileus. With basileus means there is a sovereign. There is a king. This word, this time, was used of the emperor, this Caesar himself. Now, this is one of the few times when, when Yeshua, Jesus, is called king. As in the book of Acts, he's called king a number of times in the Gospel of Matthew, but in Acts, you won't see so much why. The Gospel of Matthew was written first to the Jewish people of the Messiah. The Messiah is king. It's okay to tell Jewish people the Messiah is king. Jesus is, Yeshua is king of the Jewish people and of everybody, but he's king. So he's spoken of king. But in Acts, the gospel is now going forth to the Roman Greek world. And the, in the Roman world, to speak of a king, a sovereign, other than Caesar, is treason. Unless it's a local authority that Caesar set up, but you simply say, he is king, you're putting him in conflict, you're putting yourself in conflict with Caesar. And it's considered treason. And that word is used in Acts, that's, that, again, that same word, basileus, of the emperor. In John 19, when, when Messiah is brought to Pilate to be killed, notice what they said. He declares himself king, going against Caesar, that's treason. So ultimately it's an issue, and you know, even though these are charges made by the enemies of the gospel, this is the truth. It was a clash of kingdoms. Rome, the Roman Empire, and Israel or the kingdom of God. Caesar on one hand, Messiah on the other. Messiah was crucified, the king was crucified under the reign, the authority of Caesar. So one king and another king at war. A war of kingdoms, but then Messiah rises from the grave and the power of this king starts entering into the Roman world. It will ultimately overturn it. So the gospel is spreading through Rome, two kingdoms. The persecution of Rome against the people of Messiah, it's a war of kingdoms. So notice here, who is calling him king here? Not the believers, but those bringing charges against the believers because it was a dangerous thing to say. And that's what Rome feared and hated about the believers. Not that they were religious people, but that they were, they were in Rome, but they were like they were not of Rome. They were of another kingdom. They were under another sovereignty. So in the days of persecution, what did they try to do? They tried to make the people of God bow down and offer sacrifices to the gods of Rome. Notice that happens again and again and again. To offer to bow down before our God. Hi, I'm Jonathan Kahn, and I hope you were blessed with the video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and tap the bell icon so you're notified every time a new video is posted. Feel free to share your reactions with your comments and how you were blessed, and share this video with your friends. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.